Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel and to another episode on our Silverside Swift using Vapor CRUD series. In this episode, we're going to learn how to persist data to our database and also how to read back that data. Let me show you at our final result of this series, our idea machine, what I mean. We're reading back data and we're also able to persist or create new data to then again read it back. This is what we're going to implement. Let's dive right into it. We have left off with an array of idea which is actually a JSON response. The first thing I want to do is adjust the leaf templating or leaf template file we got provided by the web template by default and rename hello into list. So it's more robust what this template is going to do, which is listing our ideas. Let's rename the title also to idea machine up here, maybe with a space in between. So it appears up here and also use the same name for the H1. So we have a large title on our page itself. Now to roots, what we want to do is we want to serve that file with also passing in all the ideas into that file, right? And so the first thing I want to do is specify the return value so we get a better grasp about what we're doing. And this all function actually returns a future of array of idea. Why future? Because Vapor 3 is all about asynchronous code. And so that means that you're executing code that at some point in the future will return your value that you actually in, at, at, like that you actually want, and then it will wrap it into a future and then you will have to use with a future of the value. And that means you will have to deal with flat map and map to access that value out of the future again to then get back to what you're used to, kind of asynchronous uh, code. It sounds more complicated than it is. It really is not. It's just about practice and uh, continuously doing and doing it to really get a better understanding of it. And I will try my best to explain it to you. So we get a future of idea back from all how to access the value inside a future. We have two functions to do that map and flat map. Both are doing the same. They're accessing the value out of a future and passing it into the closure that comes after flat map or map. And so we're using map and then we are defining closure and we get passed in here the value out of the future and we will receive it in our variable that we define up here, which is which will be just named list. And so we have access now to the area of idea, right? It's not a type future area of idea anymore because we have accessed it with map. So when to use map or flat map? Good question. That is defined by the return value of the closure that comes after flat map or map. Again, when to use flat map or map is defined by the return value of the closure that comes after flat map and map. How? By its type. It's either a future or a non future that you're returning inside that closure. If it's a future, then you have to go back up here and use flat map. If it's a non future, like just a string, just a number, just an instance of idea, then you have to go back up here and use map, right? And uh, that's it. That's basically it. And what I like to do is I always want to start off with map to, to be able to actually access the value out of the future that I just got previously and do whatever, whatever, because at some at the beginning, I sometimes just don't know what I will return at the end. And then if we come to the return value, I then see, hmm, is it a future? Do I have to adjust my map to flat map? Or is it just a normal non future value? And I can just stick with map. That's how I do it. And so let's move on and create a new struct that will be a list context and if you don't understand why I'm doing that right here right now has to conform to encodable then you should check out my leaf templating series link is in the description because I'm explaining there why this um, what it is for and why it's good and why we need it <laughs> so we are defining a property called idealist so we get this property exposed to our inside our leaf template file and it's going to be of type array of idea. Now we can create a variable, let's call it context, which is a an instance of list context. And inside here, we pass in the list. Now we have the instance of context and we can be now it comes to the return value. What are we returning? Well, we are going to access request view and then render our view file 
which is called list, right? We just renamed it into list and also we want to pass in the context. So we get the idea list uh, exposed inside, inside our leaf template file and we can use it. This is, let's check what it actually returns. Blah, 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 a future of blah, 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 blah. All we care about is, oh, it's a returning a future, this function. And so, hmm, my return value at the end of the closure is returning a future. I have to adjust my map into a flat map, right? So now this one works just as fine. Just the whole re like the whole uh, closure of that um, of that root handler actually does not match anymore because we are not returning an array of idea. We are actually returning a future view, right? Because render returns a view, future view. And that's what we return at the end. So let's just rerun the application and refresh our page. And we see we have idea machine. We don't see any ideas yet because first of all, we don't loop over our, our idea list and display them. And secondly, we don't even have, we don't even have ideas in our database, but I would like to go here and start looping over our ideas and display them if we have some. So let's use the for tag. And again, the leaf templating series explains all of that. Define a variable, let's call it idea. And we are looping over our idea list that we got exposed in our site here through the context. And I want to define a tag for each idea to then access the idea description and close the p tag again. And I want to indent everything properly. Right, so when we refresh the page, still nothing nothing happens. Now to the fun part, how to create data. We are going to use form, a basic HTML form to post data uh, or post, yeah, to post data to our backend to then be able to uh, save that. So we're going to create a form with two attributes. First is method that will define what kind of request we're doing. Right and form only supports get and post as a request method. There are even more like HTTP methods. There are a couple of them, but the most common ones are post, get, patch, and delete. Right, and all you have to know for here is that get, for example, the method get will not allow you to send along data inside the body of the request. Post, however, does allow you to send data inside the body of the request. And so when we use the method post, our form will be able to actually send along the data that we are entering inside our input fields. Then we are going to define an action and action just says which URL we want to fire that request at. And I want to fire it at create, which is a, a URL we haven't defined yet in our roots.swift file, but we're going to do that in a second. Closing the form down here and then also defining two input uh, tags. One is input of type text. So we are able to actually define our idea and we have to also define an attribute, attribute called name. And this one is super important and I will show you in a second why it is super important. The second input is going to be of type submit and a sub, a, an input that is of type submit will automatically fire the whole form once you click it. Let's refresh the page and we see we have an input of type text and input of type submit. And it also says submit. You can also say value equal create and then refresh. And then you have the name uh, create of the button and it will just submit the whole form and send along the data that is inside this input. Now, what, how's the data? How does the data actually look like what we're sending through or with that form? We can check that out. Let's define, let's define a route that actually handles that kind of request. So we want to, what, what kind of request do we want to handle? A post request at the URL create, right? So we have to define a root with the router, which is of type post at the URL create. So that is the, that's what we are defining. We are defining a create URL. We're defining a handler that handles a request that is of type post fired at the URL create. We get the request passed in here. And what I want to do is actually print the request dot description so we can see what is inside the request. And for now, let's return good for now. I think Xcode will not be able to conclude that 
whole complicated closure type string. <laughs> That's why it says ambiguous. And then you will have to be more specific about the return type of that closure, which is string. <laughs> and then Xcode will not complain anymore and compile. We can now go into onto our page and say Digimon and fire our form and see good for now as a response. And down here, we see well, that we got our request printed. One, two, three, four, five. So you can better see it. This is where we start the server. This is the whole request we get sent at our backend. And down here you see description equal Digimon. So when we go back, Digimon was what we typed into the text input and description was the name of the text input. Now the form obviously uh, sends along the data key value uh, pair wise, so to say, it's actually form URL encoded, that's the term. But it's the important part here is that you have kind of a key value uh, pair appearance description equal Digimon and this is how you receive the data. Now we are able to decode that uh, that data into an instance of idea if all the keys are matching the property of idea. Now to be more abstract, if all the keys of a request are matching all the properties of the class that you want to use to decode from that request into an instance of that class, then it will work. Else it will throw a lot of errors and you will have to figure out what you did wrong. <laughs> so let's go back one, two, three, four, five. Uh, do that smaller or make that smaller and look at idea. Idea has two properties, the ID and description. Not all keys are matching it because we are missing the ID key right here. If the request is missing a property, uh, a, a key that you actually define as a property in your class, then it's going to throw an error as well, as long as it's not optional. If it's optional, then it's optional and you don't have to have it in your request and I'd still be able to decode from it. So long story short, let's do it so you get a better understanding what we're doing. So we're going to return, uh, we are accessing request and then the content of it and decode the content, which is this one, right? Into an instance of idea.self. And this is going to be then, when it once it's finished, it's a future of idea. How do we uh, access a value out of a future? With flat map or map. And I start always with a map. Not sure what I will return at the end of the closure yet, but we can adjust it afterwards. Decoding from, um, de using a class to decode your request from, uh, your request to, is uh, only possible if your class is conforming to content or at least decodable, just so you know, in case you have errors that you can't explain to yourself. Now we get passed in the idea into our closure and we can work with it. What we want to do is we want to say save. We want to actually execute the save query. So we save the idea to our database and we want to execute it on the back of our request, which is just our worker that will execute our database query for us. Now save returns an instance of idea again, but um, it's the one from the database then. You're saving it to the database and then it get returned uh, with the idea now, because before we haven't had the idea, this is something that you get by, by persisting it to the database, right? So save returns a future of idea again. And what we can do here is do map again to access, access the idea. And then inside here, we want to actually return as a result of saving, we want to return that view again, so we can actually see the list of all the ideas we've created. And I don't want to recode this recode the whole thing up here, right? I don't want to query the ideas here to then map it to a um, re um, response or no, to map it to a view, right? All I want to do down here is actually I want to redirect to the index because that does all the job for us already. Or yeah, so let's do that. We are returning. Let's, oh, let's just also put return up here and I think it does not throw. Should be fine. Maybe it's not, let's see. So we're returning a re um, redirect and we can do that by request, redirect, and then say where to redirect to, to the index. So what are we returning? Down here, redirect is, if we jump to the definition, 
blah, 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 returning a response. It's a non-future, so we can stick with map. Here comes a little bit more explanation. This one has to be a flat map. Why? Good question, in case you got confused a little bit. Now, this, the return value of the closure that comes after map or flat map defines whether to use map or flat map, right? So by the val by the type. So when it's a non-future, we have to use map. When it's a future, right, like here, render, this is returning a future of you, you have to use flat map. Now, why do we have to use flat map up here? Because not this, I'm not talking about this closure right now anymore. I'm talking about this whole call. This is always returning a future. So flat map and map works like that, that flat map and map, the whole call is returning a future. And since this whole call is returning a future and this whole thing here is a return value of type future inside a closure after a flat map or map, we have to use flat map. Here comes a little bit more in-depth explanation. So what does flat map actually? Oh yeah, we have to um, adjust the return value to future response because that's what we are returning at the end. Now, cock and throw, and then we are done. Here's a little bit in-depth explanation uh, just to confuse it a little bit more. Now to just round it up. So map, right? The, the type what we return at the end of the closure defines whether to choose map or flat map. Now map will then, because of the type inside that closure as a return value is a non-future, map will then put that type into a future and that's why the whole call is returning a future. That is the reason. Why is flat map returning a future? Because uh, the end, the return value of that closure, right, uh, this is returning a future and that's why you have to use flat map and flat map all what this one does is it just leaves the return value as is since it's a future of something and will return that and that's why both calls are returning at the end in its in them in their whole a future flat map is returning a future because it leaves the inside return value as is and map is returning a future because it wraps the return value inside of the closure into a future both are returning a future and that is the reason why we have um, here render is returning actually a future of view and flat map is leaving the return value as is, right? And the whole call here is returning a future of view and that's why we have future of view here. <laughs> so this video of course is uh, for you to rewatch in case you kind of feel overwhelmed by that. No worries, it took me a little bit as well to until I clicked it, but the um, the way to go about it is just practice and use it and it will click eventually, I promise. In case it didn't click already because you're a genius. <laughs> uh, so that's that's it for that. Let's run the app and let's see. We're refreshing the page and type in Digimon, enter. We got a list of Digimon, we got Digivice, enter. And it works. That is the episode. If you have at least learned one thing, you can help me out by hitting like. If you don't want to miss out on future episodes, you can hit subscribe. Check out the description box for my Patreon to support me doing YouTube full time. I introduced just a new tier to do one on one Skype calls every week to help you out on your project. If you want, you don't have to. Uh, other than that, I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.